This is section 2.2 on polynomial functions. Graph polynomial functions. In lesson 2.1, you learned about the basic characteristics of monomial functions. Monomial functions are the most basic polynomial functions. The sums and differences of monomial functions form other types of polynomial functions. Let n be a non-negative integer and let a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, to a sub n minus 1 and then a sub n be real numbers with a sub n not equal to 0. Then the function given by f of x is equal to a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 and so on all the way down to the constant is called the polynomial function of degree n. So that is the degree of the polynomial. The leading coefficient of a polynomial function is the coefficient of the variable with the greatest exponent. The leading coefficient of f of x is a sub n. Now what this all is saying is that a polynomial looks like something like this. We could have f of x equals 3x to the third plus 2x squared minus 6x plus 1. And for this polynomial, the degree is 3, because that's the highest power. The leading term is 3x to the third, and the leading coefficient is 3. Graph transformations of monomial functions. Graph each function. f of x equals x minus 2 to the fifth power. Well, if we graph f of x is equal to x to the fifth, then that would be, uh, if we plug 0 in, we get 0. If we plug 1 in, we get 1. Negative 1, we get negative 1. But then 2 to the fifth is 32, so that's way up there. This function looks like, the parent function looks like that. Now, if we're going to minus 2 from the x's, that actually moves this function two units to the right because the minus 2 is on the inside of the function. So this is right 2. So this is going to be moved 1, 2 to the right. That point will be moved 2 to the right. And this bottom point will be moved 2 to the right as well. So that's what this function looks like. Let's graph g of x equals negative x to the fourth plus 1. Well, the parent function is g of x equals x to the fourth. And if we plug 0 in, we get 0. 1 in, we get 1. And if we plug 2 into this one, we get 16. So this one is going to increase very quickly as well. If we plug negative 1 in, negative 1 to the fourth, we get a positive 1. And if we plug negative 2 in, to the fourth we get a positive 16. So this kind of looks like a parabola except it's a lot flatter on the bottom. This negative out in front of the x to the fourth means we're going to reflect this graph over the x-axis. In other words we're going to turn this graph upside down. So there's the three points that will be reflected over the x-axis and then all three of these points, actually all the points, will be pushed up one. So this is up one. So that point goes there, this one is pushed up 1, this one is pushed up 1. So here's what this graph would look like. We have a key concept, leading term test for polynomial n behavior. If n is odd and a sub n is positive, so in other words, if we have a sub n x to the n, and that's the leading term, for example, we could have 4x to the third, where the leading, co leading term is positive and the, the power is odd. So n is odd and it, it is positive. If that's the case, then the limit as x approaches infinity will be infinity, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity will be negative infinity. Now, if n is odd, but a sub n is negative, for example, negative 4x to the third, then these will be turned upside down. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity will be infinity. Limit as x approaches infinity will be negative infinity. What about even powers? So for example, uh, 7x to the sixth. If we had 7x to the sixth, then both sides would be going up. If we had negative 7x to the sixth, then on both sides, uh, the function will be going down on the end. Remember, we're talking here about end behavior. 
Example 2. Apply the leading term test. Describe the end behavior of the graph of each polynomial function using limits. Explain your reasoning using the leading term test. The leading term is 3x to the fourth. So this leading term is positive and the degree is even. So it's positive and even, which means the limit as x approaches either plus or minus infinity of the function f of x is equal to positive infinity. Both sides will be going up. And if we look at the graph, let's get to the arrow here. If we move this over, here's the graph and we can see as we either go positive infinity or negative infinity, both sides on the ends are going up. For g of x, we have to find the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient isn't necessarily the first one. This is not the leading coefficient because we have a power of 2 here, but we have a power of 7. So this is actually the leading coefficient of the polynomial. Now the leading coefficient now is negative and odd. And whenever I think of polynomials and I'm trying to do n behavior, I think of either x squared or I think of x to the third. And a negative x to the third in this case looks like that. That's what negative x to the third looks like. So the limit for this polynomial as x approaches positive infinity of g of x is equal to negative infinity. As we go to the right, this polynomial will go down. And then the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x, which means as we go to the left, as we go to the left, this polynomial is going up to positive infinity. And if we look at the polynomial graph, that's exactly what's happening, except this has a little bit more twists and turns than just the simple function of x to the third. h of x equals x to the third minus 2x squared. We have to find the leading coefficient, or the leading term, I should say. And the leading term is actually x to the third. This function on the end will look exactly like x to the third. Now x to the third looks like that. So we're going to describe its ending behavior. Well, first of all, uh, the leading term is uh, positive and odd. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of h of x is equal to positive infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of h of x is equal to negative infinity. Now we can look at the polynomial graph and we can see on the ends it acts just like x to the third except it has a little bit more twists and turns uh, here in the middle. Zeros and turning points of polynomial functions. A polynomial function of degree n greater than or equal to 1 has, at most, n distinct real zeros and, at most, n minus 1 turning points. Now, we look at this graph over here. Here's the function f of x. The highest power is 6, which means that this polynomial will have, at most, 6 zeros, or it will cross the x-axis at most 6 times, and there will be a a possibility of five turning points. So this function has one point where it turns, two points where it turns, and three points where it turns. So this polynomial turns once, twice, three times, and it has one, two, three distinct zeros. Or in other words, this one crosses the x-axis three times. State the number of possible real zeros and turning points of x to the third minus 5x squared plus 6x. Then determine all of the zeros by factoring. So there are three possible zeros. And two possible turning points. Now they want us to determine all the real zeros by factoring. So let's factor this. We can take an x out and we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 and then we have x minus 3 and x minus 2. So the zeros are x equals 0, x equals 3, 
and x equals 2. Example 4, zeros of polynomial function in quadratic form. State the number of possible real zeros and turning points for g of x. Then determine all of the real zeros by factoring. Uh, there can be four possible real zeros and three possible turning points. Now we're supposed to find the zeros by factoring. Well, this is kind of a quadratic, except we have an x to the fourth. So to get x to the fourth, we could have x squared and x squared. And we need factors of negative 4 that add up to negative 3. We have negative 4 and uh, plus 1. Well, we can keep factoring this. We can have x plus 2 and x minus 2. This is the difference of two squares. And x squared plus 1 cannot be factored. So the real zeros of this polynomial are negative 2 and 2. Now if we solve for this one, x squared plus 1 equals 0, x squared equals negative 1, minus 1 over, and then square root both sides, we'd have plus or minus the square root of negative 1, or plus or minus i. But that is not real. So the two answers they're looking for are negative 2 and 2. polynomial function with repeated zeros. State the number of possible real zeros and turning points of h of x, then determine all of the real zeros by factoring. So the number of uh, possible, so we have four possible real zeros and three possible turning points. And then we're supposed to find the real zeros by factoring. Well, we can take a, an x squared out. x squared, and that leaves, uh, actually we can take a negative x squared out. I'd rather do that. And we'll have positive x squared plus x minus 2. We have negative x squared times x uh, plus 2 times x minus 1. The real zeros are x equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals 1. For f of x equals the following, apply the leading term test. Determine the zeros and state the multiplicity of any repeated zeros. Find a few additional points and then graph the function. So we're going to apply the leading term test. If I multiplied all of this out, the leading term would be 2x times x, that'd be 2x squared, and times two more x's, that would be x to the fourth. This would be 2x to the fourth, which means the limit as x approaches either plus or minus infinity of f of x is equal to infinity on both sides. Determine the zeros and state the multiplicity of any repeated zeros. So we have x equals 0, we have x equals negative 3 halves, and for the last factor here, we have x equals 1 with a multiplicity of 2, meaning this one counts twice. Let's plot those zeros. We have a 0 at 0, we have a 0 at negative 1 and a half, and we have a 0 at 1. Find a few additional points and then graph the function. Well, we're going to kind of do all this in, in one shot. What I do know is that on the ends, on the right end and the left end, the, the ending behavior is positive infinity. So this function I know is not going to turn back towards um, the x-axis because there would be another zero here. So the graph is going to look like this. Now all I have left to do is fill in a few points in between. So let's find f of, let's say, negative 1. That'd be negative 1 times, and I'm plugging negative 1 into the function here, negative 2 plus 3, and then times negative 1 minus 1 squared, which is negative 1 times 1 times 
that's going to be negative 2, that'll be 4. So this would be negative 4. So at negative 1, we're down at 1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we just have to make find one more point. Let's say we find that point at maybe 1 half. So we need f of 1 half. We have 1 half times, if I take half of 2, that's going to give me 1. So we have 1 plus 3, and then times 1 half minus 1 squared. That's equal to, let's see, 1 half of 4 is 2, and then times 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, but when we square that, we get 1 fourth. So that's equal to 2 fourths, which is equal to 1 half. So we're up here at a half, that's probably 1, let's back that up. Where's my, there it is, undo button. Should I undo it again? There we go. And at 1 half, we're up here at 1 half. So this function goes down, back through, and then bounces off of 1, like that.